Hey everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel, Relax Cut Glue. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. So today I'm gonna be working on four ATCs, artist trading cards. For those of you who are wondering what ATCs are, they are two and a half inches by three and a half inches, little pieces of art that you can use any medium and you trade them or you keep them for yourselves or you send them in happy mails, whatever you wanna do. People send me um, their ATCs all the time. I absolutely love it. I do plan on doing um, an ATC swap at some point. Um, you know, it's just been a really weird year for me being, you know, with my dad being sick and passing away. So just bear with me. I'll get there because I love artist trading cards. They are a lot of fun. And um, I really want to say that I really appreciate those of you who stick through um, the videos that are not really your vibe. I realize that I like two very different styles. I like the very pretty, vintagey, girly things. And then I also like the playful, bright, colorful things such as my sticker book, my magazine glue books, um, my Halloween glue book, you know, things like that. And I, I appreciate that not all of you like those things, but you still stick around for me and support me. And I think that's great. And I, I really appreciate that. I just wanted to let you guys know that, that I do notice. And um, I like to jump from one to the other um, because I get bored and I like to do different things. So anywho, I am using some papers. I just grabbed a bunch out of my basket. I keep a basket from the Dollar Tree full of um, vintage style papers, floral papers, book pages, that kind of thing. And I kind of tear them up into smaller bits um, and then put them in there so that they're ready for collage. So if I feel like collaging, I just grab the basket. I don't have to go hunting for um, ephemera and papers and all that kind of stuff. So I grabbed a bunch of um, those papers and threw them on top. I have some papers from my friend Jackie at the Rockwell Design Crafts on Etsy. Her link is always in my description box. Um, I'm also using pages from Catered Papers book. I've showed them um, quite a few times. She has sent me two books of hers and those books have um, I totally draw blank. envelopes. Thank you. Um, security envelope, the insides, you know, the fun little patterns that we like to save. She made books with all those patterns and it's so fun and I absolutely love them. So I tore a couple pages out of those, put that in my pile. And then I also got in a recent um, Happy Mail, a book that I had in my Amazon wish list and it was Victorian. Wait, is it vintage or Victorian? Let me look. It is vintage floral scrapbook paper. Um, and so I wanted to use a bunch of those. So I decided that each one of these ATCs um, are going to be pretty similar. I wanted to use some of that floral paper, some of those security envelope backgrounds, and you'll see here, um, I did end up cutting the video short so you don't see me finishing these, and I am so sorry for that. Um, I'm not feeling well. If you're a Glue Crew member, you already know this from my video yesterday, but Bob and Jackson and I all have some kind of little bug. Jackson had to come home from school yesterday. He just wasn't feeling good, and um, although... We all feel a little bit better today. We are just not great. <laughs> so um, I ended up feeling really sick and I had to stop my video. Um, so I, after I felt better and I rested and I ate a little something and drank some water, I came back in and just kind of did the finishing touches on them. So I apologize for that, but I didn't want to waste the video um, because, you know, I like watching people make ATCs. Oh, and that paper right there is from a book that I got in Happy Mail from my friend Helen. It's black and white papers. All of the papers are. And so I wanted to incorporate some of that. And um, I just had a lot of fun. Man, the best part about artist trading cards for me is it's kind of a quick project. You know, you just if you want to have a project that you can finish you know, that day or in, even in a few minutes, really, um, artist trading cards are the way to go. They're just a lot of fun. And tearing paper, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I had this, um, I had a customer a long time ago who was a child um, psychiatrist slash 
Uh, anyways, he helped kids, young kids with mental health issues. And he was telling me that one thing that's really awesome um, for kids to do while, you know, if they're frustrated or if they need to vent instead of like destroying objects, you know, kids who have um, issues and they need to get that out is tearing paper. Get a get a box and fill it full of, you know, uh, junk mail or um, newspaper or whatever and let kids just tear it up and know that this box is for your papers and you can just rip them up. There's something very satisfying about tearing paper. I absolutely love it. Um yeah. Coincidentally, another thing he said is you could have um, kids put paper in a paper shredder. Obviously, they have to be a little bit older, but it's just something very satisfying about it. So I really liked doing that. I had a lot of fun tearing up some papers, some papier. These are so fun. And it's so fun to trade with people. And they're great to give in Happy Meals because it's like a little piece of art from you to them. And there's really only two rules with artist trading cards. Some people will disagree with me, but I've been doing this a long time and these are the only rules that I have ever seen. And one is they aren't to be sold. Artist trading cards are just for trading. And two, the size has to be two and a half by three and a half. Now there's other things called artist trading coins where people make a two and a half inch circle and they make coins. Um, there's inches where it's one inch by one inch, a twinchy, which is two inches by two inches. You know, if you make something else that's a different size, it's just called something else. An artist trading card is the same size as a deck of cards or a baseball card that you trade. Um, if you don't have, you know, card stock or you don't want to use your card stock as a base, you can buy a deck of um playing cards and use those because they're the same size. So there's a lot of options. It's really fun. And I, I really encourage you to give it a try if you haven't done it already. And here's the other thing that's really cool about these. You can use any medium. Do you draw? Draw on your artist trading cards. Do you paint? Paint. Jelly print? Jelly print. Um, people even make little embroidery pieces that are two and a half by three and a half. Um, do you want to just add stickers? Fine. Um, but you will find that in some groups, people take their artist trading cards very seriously. And you have actual like very, very, very talented artists that will trade and stuff. So, you know, sometimes people want to trade with somebody that's more on their level. And um, because you're giving away a, a really nice piece of art, even though it's tiny, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Um, I do know that in one of the groups I was in, there was quite a few people complaining that they put a lot of work into their art and then somebody sent them, you know, a two and a half by three and a half piece of paper with a sticker on it and called it a day and they were, you know, disappointed. And I get that. I mean, it just, you know, find somebody that, I don't know, I hate even saying that because it, it really shouldn't matter um, what you get in return, but I just wanted to let you know, there are some people out there that take them very seriously and, you know, just, if that's not your thing, look out for that, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's, that's what I'm saying, but it's also great for all age groups, you know, um, kids can make them, you know, some teachers even have kids make this and then they trade with an, um, a class in a different country. So if you're, or another state, so if you're a teacher and you want your class to make those and then have a pen pal where they, you know, send them to another student in another class and then they get one. That's fun. I've seen a lot of teachers do that. Um, yeah, it's really great. Or if you're in charge of an art program at your school, this is a great idea too. You can paint on them. You can do whatever you want. The options are endless. I do have two binders um, that I keep my artist trading cards in. I buy the plastic sleeves for baseball cards and they have nine slots in them. And that's what I keep my artist trading cards in. And it's really fun to flip through and look because I have some that are just cheesy and I have some that I've put a lot of work into. I, you know, I love trading them, but I have some that I did, like I drew my own art on and I kind of regret sending it because now I don't have it anymore. Um, I'm one of those people. I'm very sentimental. So that's kind of a bummer, but I had a lot of fun doing it. So yeah, I have all different styles. I've used magazine images on them. I've painted, I've used um, stickers, I've drawn images, I've painted, I've collaged. Most of mine are collage, 
A lot of them um, are also from master boards. So if you enjoy making master boards, it's great to chop those up into two and a half by three and a half and have those be your bases for your artist trading cards. So there's a lot of options. And so just do whatever you feel is, um, you know, right up your alley and, and, and fun for you. But don't feel obligated to trade them if you don't want to. That's, it's not a rule that you have to do that. It's just a thing that people do. So I decided to use my little lady stickers and and some stamps. Oh, I was showing you it was that original um, Rudolph movie where, what is that, Clay? Clay, oh, oh my gosh, I'm having a brain fart. I said it right in the video. I remember saying it. Um, I don't know. I love those movies. The old, old ones where it's stop action. Is that the word? Stop action movies? Those I just love them. They're my favorite Christmas kind of movies. So I decided, I was like, well, I really like this girl on this. Why don't I put one on every single one? And that's kind of how this started. Um, all of them will end up with a stamp, real stamps, um, like postage stamps, um, a butterfly sticker, a girl, and then a word. So, oh, and then a flower. I just now added a flower to each one. So I'll show you all these in the end. But so now I'm just kind of like, you know, auditioning which one I want to go where and kind of color coordinating a little bit with the background. And on these, instead of doing brown around the edges, which I do really, really like, I feel like it really makes the um, artist trading card pop. Black is really great too because then it makes the inside really pop, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Um, but today I decided to go a little crazy and I used my teal because I absolutely love teal and I like colorful vintage as well. So I decided that adding teal might be really fun to bring those pops of color from the flowers and stuff like that out. So I only had a couple postage stamps out and then I realized, well, if I'm going to do all the same, you know, do a woman on each one, I need to have a postage stamp on each one and the butterfly on each one. So I went through my little washi stickers there and grabbed one of each of those, except for the postage stamps. Those are actual postage stamps. Um, if you are a Glue Crew member, please head over to our membership page because this morning um, we have been talking about doing a craft retreat. There's a squirrel again. You guys, my house has been surrounded by squirrels. Oh my gosh, it looked at me right when I said it. I swear to God, it's a sign from my dad. I'm not even joking. I've never seen them since my dad, but since my dad has passed away, they're on my fence. Never see them on my fence. Um, it's really bizarre. And I have a weird story with Xena in the squirrels too. And that was my dad's dog. So anyways, so odd. Sorry, another squirrel moment. <laughs> Deb's going to call me out. <laughs> Deb always knows because I'm always like squirrel. Um, anyways, uh, we were talking about a craft retreat and how I've always wanted to do one and how I think it would be really fun. And um, you guys seem to really like that too. And what's kind of interesting, and it was kind of funny at first, but a lot of us are introverts. And I think that most of us who are in this art community kind of are you know, we have that, we're just very similar. And I might come off as an extrovert. And I can be I, I can be very extroverted when I'm comfortable with you, or I'm comfortable in my surroundings. So um, going to a retreat would be nerve wracking for me too. I just want you to know that I mean, I do have um, an anxiety disorder. But I know that once I get there, I will be very excited to be there. And I would be thrilled to be able to meet you guys face to face and hug some of you. And anyways, um, a lot of you were really interested, but again, you also talked about being introverted and I totally get that. Um, but I have started looking at locations for a craft retreat and I found one that I really liked and they actually serve um, food there. So they serve you all three of your meals that's included in your price, which I think is fantastic because I just want to craft and hang out or go lay down in my bed if I need a break. You know what I mean? I don't want to have to cook a meal for everybody. Not that I wouldn't love to. I, I think I'm a pretty good cook. Um, but I don't want to have that responsibility or pressure. I would rather just, you know, be like, Hey, it's, you know, lunchtime, everybody meet and, you know, the lunch hall or whatever. So I think that would be fun for all of us to not have to have the pressure of worrying about 
food and meals and that kind of stuff. Um, they do have like a soda machine and stuff like that. And there's, you know, obviously you can bring snacks or your own food and they work with dietary restrictions. And anyways, it's a beautiful place. There's walking trails if we need to get out and stretch our legs. There's like fire pits and, you know, all kinds of sporting things like volleyball and that kind of stuff, which I highly doubt any of us will be out there doing that. Although I did play volleyball, you guys. Um, I was really good at it, even though I'm a little shorty. Um, I was really good at it. Uh, so anyways, yeah, I'm really uh, looking into this. And then they have um, a scrapbook retreat. Actually, it's a kind of an all craft. If you sew or quilt or whatever, you can go to it too. Um, coming up in November. So I kind of want to go to that. It's a two night, two night, three day retreat. And I kind of want to go to that and just kind of get a feel for the place and see if it would work. Um, for that. So if anybody would ever be interested in going on a retreat, um, let me know. Obviously, we're not set in stone right now. It would be sometime next year because I want to give everybody time to um, prepare for it and, you know, save up your money. And I think the price is very good considering you're staying there, lodged, they set up tables for you, and they provide, they have like a full staff that provides all meals and all that kind of stuff. So um, the price was, I was actually really surprised at how affordable it was. So anyways, uh, if that's something you're interested in, you know, let me know down in the comments. And, um, you know, I, like I said, when I'm ready to actually have people sign up for it and stuff, I will be sure to let you know. So don't worry about that. All right, guys, so that's where it cuts off. These are my pictures up close. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful day, and until next time, bye.